Well, now that is quite a sight, isn't it? It is magnificent, is what it is. Well, and it should be. Every decent medieval town in Europe should have one of these decorating its innermost sanctum, the old city, as it were. And our town, which we are in right now, is no exception. Or maybe the church isn't really your thing. Maybe you are more interested in an old manor built by some Germans, lived in by some Germans for about 150 years and, you know, quite possibly very influential. And, well, influential where, you ask? Well, in the G Russian court, no less. Or maybe the whole 18th, 19th century mon manor thing isn't really your thing as well. And you are more interested in the medieval period, some real power, some real blood and stuff. And maybe this is where you will find yourself to be. Hi there, I'm Chris. We are here in the small town of Tesis, in the center of the old town and in the territory of this beautiful piece of architecture, which is known as the Livonian Order's main castle or the Master's Castle, the main residence where the main leader of the Order used to live hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And this building right here is something that was some time ago part of the old castle fortifications and was rebuilt to be a manor for the wealthy and powerful to live in. And all of this is located just a hop and skip and a jump, like five minutes apart from each other, located in the old town of Tsesis, or as it was known long, long time ago, and I'm talking really long time ago, and this is more than 800 years back in time, when this place was still known as Venden. And when the church, the castle and the manor were nowhere to be found and the only thing you would see here when you came to visit was just a small insignificant village with a couple of, well, locals living day by day doing the daily grind, right? So, how does this all factor in with today? Well, today I will tell you in a very short concise way why you should probably plan to visit our town in the next couple of days, weeks, months, or hell, maybe next year, who knows, or hey, the summer is still going and we are sweating right now, so it is the greatest time to come here and sweat in Tesis as well. That's a little joke. All right, so if you still are following us, then let's talk a little bit of history and then jump into a little bit of what is happening right now. What In history times, the Germans, the Teutonic Order, or the Livonian Order as we know it, they came here and they established a foothold. One of the many, many castles were built in today's Baltic states, that is Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, and throughout modern Europe as well. Way, way, way back when there was no Europe to be found. And they were a rich and powerful organization, which was not a government, mind you, but still had way more money and way more power than anybody should really have. Of course, that is debatable, but hey, it is late and we are not really, you know, scientists or historians here. What we do know is every good knight needs to be fed. Otherwise, well, imagine those 30-something kilos of steel and armor plating on his body. Well, if he doesn't eat well, he will die in the battlefield. So here we are on the next spot, which is the inner garden of the castle. Now, a good knight needs to eat, and he eats, well, a lot, uh, two times uh, a day, two meals, no breakfast, but lunch and dinner, so that's nice. And their food is quite varied. You might say, oh wait, but these are, I know, these are Catholic priests as well. They are vegetarians. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is not the case. As we know from old statutes of the German order, of the Livonian order, that these knights were allowed to consume meat as part of their daily cuisines three times a week. Now that is a lot, especially considering that even having uh, meat one time a week was, well, a, a celebration for normal people. 
And, well, these people had more money that they knew what to do for. And so, well, you wanted to be part of this organization. Why not? If you were a servant or if you were a craftsman working for them, hell, you might even get paid because the money was good, life was decent, and well, in the medieval times, if you lived to be 50, you were one lucky man or lucky bastard. You, you take your pick. And so, what does it mean for today? Well, for today, if you want to have a good meal, then Caesar's has plenty of options to satisfy your cuisine needs. You want some local stuff, some international stuff, or even if you want to take out some sushi, we got you covered. But that is all part of the daily grind for today as well. Back to 500 years in the past. So, you are a father, let's say, and you have three sons, the youngest, the middle, and the oldest one. If he, the oldest one would normally uh, get, you know, the father's job, or the whole money, the whole shebang, the whole happy meal, if you want to say it like that. The middle one, he would get something. There will still be some, uh, you know, bits and pieces on the plate to get after the eldest brother, but the youngest one, he was in a kind of a pickle. So, usually, if you were from a wealthy family, you would be the youngest brother, then sadly you would be sent out to basically become a priest in a monastery. And lo and behold, this structure that you are currently looking at, guess what? It was originally built to be such a monastery for men. Well, some women were found. Uh, you know, workers in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, we are talking about ancient history here. There is no uh, gender equality, big pardon. But I digress. So you are sent here and you are a man, no older than 14 years. You are not married, you are a Christian naturally. And so you become a servant of God and you have earned or, uh, you know, bought in in this very prestigious organization that has existed here in Venden or in Cesis for a couple of centuries. And so if you are a knight or maybe you are a priest because there are class systems in this organization. There are the priests that are men of letters that you receive an education and they are, you know, your basic priests, nothing to be uh, concerned about. Or you become a knight. You also get an education, a bit more militaristic. You know how to wield a sword, you know how to ride a horse, how to wield your armor of steel, about 30 kilos heavy and, well, it is, well, life's good, as they would say. But what about today? Well, we don't have an order to boast about, but we do have many activities for the young, the old and the middle-aged to enjoy in the in Cesis. You are a proprietor of sports, we got you covered with our stadium. Maybe you would like to enjoy some quality walks around the town. Well, the town is picture perfect on every spot, so that's covered as well. Or maybe, maybe you want to take a bike ride or a bicycle ride around the town or around the region. We have some beautiful spots for you to enjoy and, well, if you want to have a swim, we got you covered as well. There is a river not too far from the town. You can rent a boat, have a kayak ride with your whole family. It's quality time, I assure you. But so, jumping back into history. Now, you have become a knight and, well, uh, you're also a Catholic priest. So. Uh, what does that mean for you uh, monetarily? Sadly, you own nothing. Nothing. You are as empty as it could be. And you have no money, you have no title whatsoever, but what you do have is your religion, your faith, and the... Well, you have this. You have a castle to sleep in. Now, imagine sleeping here. That was a privilege. That's no boasting. Sadly, if you were just a normal knight or just a priest, well, your accommodations were not, would not be five-star, four seasons type of hotel level, but you would have like a small place to sleep in the 
later years of the council, but if you were somebody important, like holding a title in the organization as well, let's say the war general or maybe even the master himself, well, my friend, then you have just pulled the medieval jackpot and you have your own abode. You have your own private room. You have a nice look out of the windows, and yes, windows, medieval times, very expensive to have from, from uh, their perspective. Nothing really important today, but then this castle, this castle had glass in all of the windows. And here's the best part, imported from Venice. Now, that sounds ka-ching, 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 am I right? Well, I hope I'm right. <clears throat> Anywho, back to today. Now, if you want to have a really good time, then Seisis is mainly known for its culture and its art. Throughout the year, we host a myriad of festivals, of concerts, song and dance, theater, or if you want to visit an arts gallery, we got you covered on that as well. But hey, we have a festival going on right now, the Arts Festival, as every single year this happens in July and August. And for the medieval connoisseurs in your family, we have our medieval festivals as well. But, you know, time is always short and we have so much to talk about, but there is just one more thing that is quite important when you visit this place, and that is for Latvians, possibly the most important thing that they associate this town and the history of our country is the flag. Because Tsesis is known to be the cradle of the Latvian national flag, the red, white, red stripes that you can see in the distance. Because the story tells us almost, well, as old as the town is, 800 years ago, there was a battle, and the German knights wanted some help to fight against, well, some evildoers, you know how re these religious types are. And so, reinforcements arrived from, from Venden, and they were carrying this red-striped, red-white flag with them. And this is known to be a true fact in, st in the story, because it, we can find it in the so-called Reimkronik, a historical document of the German order. But here, where we are standing right now, and what you see before you, is part of the first building the Germans built here. And this is the chapel. The most important place in the whole castle, because the chapel was the first to be placed here, and the altar you're seeing right now is as old as the castle itself. The altar is as old as the town itself. You won't find a similarly old piece of history than this altar. Because the chapel is where the day for the knight and the priest began and where it ended. Seven times every single day you would come here and you would pray for your luck on the battlefield, for your brothers in the battlefield, or you would pray, you know, stuff. I am not religious, I can't really comment. But hey, here we are. Now, we are closing, and sadly, this is where I will have to say adieu, adieu, adieu. But, well, you have seen the core of the town. I've told you some things. You can always just open up your nice place called Google and find out what else you can find in this small patch of heaven in Europe, in the Baltic states, called Tesis or Venden. <laughs>